start recording if that's okay with you. First question is the easiest. What is your name, madam? Cindy Wilcox. Will you spell your name for me, please? C-I-N-D-Y-W-I-L-C-O-X. Okay, Cindy, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you for doing this interview with me. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's fun. It is fun. It is fun. Okay, so I know that you are connected with this organization. How, how did you come to know about this organization? Well, I, I, I became a member. Um, my son was diagnosed three years ago with um, a brain tumor, a malignant brain tumor, brain cancer. And um, I, I, my, son, my other son said, Mom, you need to go get some help. Uh, I was six months into it, and um, there was all kinds of emotions going, going around. And um, he said, you really need, I mean, he was wonderful. He was calling me every day. He still does. Uh, but he said, it's bigger than me. And there's so much to think about. There's so much to deal with. Maybe you really need to go to a professional, which, you know, I certainly, had, I'm not opposed to that. It just, I was beyond even, you know, thinking clearly enough to know that I needed that. And so the only, the first thing I opened up was something called Cancer Support Community. I knew nothing about it. Uh, actually, I knew absolutely nothing about it, but it was the first one on the list, and I called. And I got uh, uh, Cindy Cervantes, who answered the phone, who was wonderful. And she invited me in and I, I went in and I, I spoke with, with her and I, I had a, a, a lovely time with uh, Stacy, uh, the art uh, therapist counselor. Oh my God, what a fabulous woman. And uh, it gave me a place to go to a place. It gave me a place to share in, and it gave me a, a place to um, deal with some of these emotions that I had no idea how to do. And uh, I really have been connected with them ever since. Uh, uh, sadly, my son passed uh, April, um, March thirtieth, uh, two thousand nineteen. Um, but I went back, um, and uh, and so it it gave me it gave me an anchor, is what it gave me uh, to be able to to be real, and um, and it's been an extraordinary experience, uh, and wonderfully helpful. I can't say enough about the organization. I don't know if you've been to the community to see it for yourself but it's lovely and they don't charge for anything it, it's quite an extraordinary place so you walk in you feel like you're in a in a living room and then they have these activity rooms and counseling uh, rooms it's very special i'm so sorry for the loss of your son thank you and i'm so happy that you found this community so am i and then I come to find out that it was Gilda's Clubhouse and um, who I love dearly, you know. Uh, and so uh, it, it made it even, even warmer to me to have that kind of connection. I mean, I, didn't, I knew nothing about it. Honest to God, when I called, I knew nothing about it. And so to find out there's that um, connection as well was very special. Uh I think so many people don't know what to do with grief um, when they're experiencing it. What, what have you learned about grief? <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's different for everyone. I think everyone goes through it in different times in different ways. Uh, what I learned most is that it comes in waves. You know, um, I, ha I, I can honestly say there was not much of waves the first year. It was pretty consistently awful. And uh, 
And, and then uh, at the end of the, the first year, which was this past March, which led right into Corona, my goodness, um, was the, the total, uh, you know, uh, level of agony that I was feeling kind of, I had days where I wasn't. And so there were moments where I said, oh my God, does this mean I don't care? You know, but it's not, that's where the wave started. So that I can laugh, I could smile. I can, I can be with people. Initially, I couldn't do any of that. I, 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 I went with friends out of town. Oh my God, so to birthday party. Uh, that turned into a progressive birthday party with five houses and a, and a, and then a band and I thought I was going to lose my mind. This was six weeks afterwards, mm. and it was I can say I can tell you, bar none, this was probably one of the very worst weekends of my life because I couldn't escape from it, yeah. and I, the last thing I wanted to do is be in a party and. So in trying to um, do the right thing for friends, I wasn't doing the right thing for myself. So what I can certainly suggest is think about what you do, why you do it, and take care of yourself first. Yeah. Um, painting, is that, have you always been painting? No, I've always wanted to. I, you know, I, I can go back, you know, at different times in my life and I've always wanted to paint and, and, and found out each time that I had absolutely no talent and put it away, please. And so uh, three years ago, I was looking on Facebook of all places and they had this thing. I mean, it was, I have a, a, a total love of color and and I was mesmerized. There was, there was, this was this thing called poor painting, P-O-U-R painting. And I, I couldn't take my, I couldn't, I couldn't stop watching it. And, and I was mesmerized by how the, the, the colors m meld and mix together and the designs they make. And I fell in love with it. And, uh, and I watched it, uh, I, I watched it nonstop, actually. That was part of my grieving was I started, as Stacy said to me um, a long time ago, I didn't start grieving after Eric passed. I started grieving the moment I found out that he had uh, a brain tumor. And so I didn't do the painting in the first six months, but I sat for days on end, weeks on end. I never stopped watching the pouring of the paint. It's, it, I was able to get lost in that and, and not have to think about anything else. And so what painting has done for me has saved my soul and saved my sanity. Uh, so about six months into it, I went to the store and I started buying. And sadly, <laughs> I'm still buying. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I have, I have, Oh my God, I have a house full of paints and supplies and canvases and cottons and cases and cabinets and it's overwhelmed my life, uh, but it allowed me to think about something other than. And so I would start painting at 12 o'clock at night and paint all night. I wasn't sleeping. So to me, it was, it was I was able to escape into painting and uh, so I could have been drinking or doing drugs. So I think probably pretty healthy and, um, and I've loved it. it I, I, I found an outlet, uh, that I have, I've come to truly love and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for Stacy. She encouraged me every step of the way. She said, well, bring them in. I got to see it. And, and then we would look at the, at the paintings and, and with her eye, you know, we would turn it this way, that way, whatever, whatever we found the right way to look at it. And because they're all abstract and uh, there was just no judgment. And, and it made me 
I love them. I love my paintings. So yes, and she did that for me. Can you tell me a little bit more about Stacy? I'm gonna interview her next week. What can I expect? Stacy is marvelous. She's warm, she's loving, she's very caring um, and accepting and non-judgmental. Um, everything you want in a, in, a, in a therapist, certainly everything you want in an art therapist, for goodness sakes. I, I, the first time I went to the, to the art class, I, she, they were doing art classes every Friday. And she was, at that point, she was doing a series of uh, teaching about different artists and, you know, and how you, their different work. And so the first one was Mark Rothko, which I thought was going to be very easy. I could do, I could do a box. I can, you know, I can do that. I couldn't. And um, so I, I'm busily, I'm very busy painting and, <laughs> and so is every there had to be twenty people in the in in the room on this very long, wonderful table, and everyone's busy. I never looked at anyone else and I never stopped working and I continued to paint 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 and then I thought I was finished, and I looked at it and I said, "Oh my God, I look like a five year old i mean there's nothing there's nothing here that looks good and then I made the mistake of looking around, and everyone had done this gorgeous work. And then I had this I, I'm, I, kindergarten. That's all it looked like, you know. And, and then, but I went back and and I continued painting like a five year old, which I I I, I was recently asked to um, to do a painting uh, for an art auction. And uh, so I I love my again I love my my paintings in terms of the abstract and. Sometimes we get some, I get, do get something out of, something more um, specific from it. And then she said, you know, you want to do it about a flag. Well, I can't paint a flag. <laughs> I can't paint a flag any more than I can paint a, a purple box. I, I just, and so I, I lost that ability to, to have my art in an art auction. But, but, but Stacy never stopped uh, being anything but encouraging and caring and uh, and then the other side of it so uh, as far as the art was concerned she was overwhelmingly uh, encouraging but then again as a therapist she she gained the insight and knowledge and sensitivity and into my whole family. It's, you know, Eric was sick, but it affects the entire family. And um, she had her finger on the pulse of that. Um, I can't say enough about her. She sounds like a fantastic woman. Um, you, will, you will enjoy her. She's very, very real. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's something that, what's it, something that you discovered because of her, something that she helped you discover or realize? Oh, oh well, so many things, but it, for me, the, the painting, the, the ability to reach deeper in and not judge myself. And um, because I would, you know, I would pick up a painting that I did and say, well, this is horrible. And, you know, and she never accepted that. And well, this is a mistake and I shouldn't have done that. And, you know, and, and of course, whatever I've done led me to the next place that I may have done differently. So I've learned from everything or even if I didn't, I, I think I did actually. Um, it was her her insistence on accepting of myself and where I am at the moment doesn't mean I stay there. Um, and she called me friends. It's very lovely. Um, I'm sure she she treats most people that way. I'm sure she treats you know everyone like that. I. I I have, I have no illusions, 
But the word friend is very special and for me. And it was very, very helpful in a very caring way. Yeah. That's, that's a gift that, you know, there's those certain people that make, I think, everybody feel like they are the most special. That's, that's a gift. I have always felt that way with her. No. I've always felt that way with her. Like we had, you know, I could be in a group with her, but when we looked at each other, I knew she was looking into my soul and seeing it. And that's a gift. You're right. That's a tremendous gift. Yeah. Will you tell me about your son? He, um, he was diagnosed when he was 48 and he had, uh, he was married. Uh, they live in, um, in Atlanta and I uh, had two little girls who were only seven and eight at that point. And, and he was traveling. They traveled from Atlanta to Houston. They went to MDA continuously. Con I mean, continuously. It was like they were commuting sometimes weekly from Atlanta to, uh, to Houston. And I went as often as I could, stayed with them. You know, he needed six weeks of of radiation. Uh, he had the surgery. Uh, it, it pretty extraordinary. Uh, he was, an, well, it was horrible. He was initially diagnosed um, from a horrible, horrible head. He woke up very in horrible pain and we rushed to the hospital, a local hospital, just a, a regional local hospital in, in Atlanta. And that doctor who I, I, I I can't say enough about, said, I think I can do the surgery, but I will, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even ever attempt it, but let me get you to the person who can. And he got us to the head neurosurgeon at MD Anderson. Wow. And that was, that was on a Thursday. We were, we were at Anderson the following Tuesday. That's, that's remarkable. That that doesn't happen. That's yeah. That we it's, that man, it's we, yeah. we we were in front of the right person yeah. at the right time, because there was an intern who told us it was inoperable and there was nothing we could do about it the day before. So you know the 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 horror stories, yeah. you know, but uh, we 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 met this extraordinarily um, talented uh, surgeon. And he did the best he could. And uh, Eric, Eric only lasted 19 months. Uh, but, uh, but in that time, I mean, we had 19 months. And I can only say that, you know, at this point, I wasn't saying this then. Um, so 19 months is still nothing because he had babies home, you know. Yeah. Um, in in terms of his girls, so um, it's it's been tough. Um, the uh, the pandemic, uh, I, I think, in certain you know sometimes you have to look at the the bad with the good. And uh, my daughter in law, who has an extraordinarily uh, high powered position, and thank goodness because her insurance covered most of this. Otherwise, this, this would never have been able to do commuting back and forth on a continuing basis. Her insurance was fabulous. Um, so she can't leave her job. And so it meant uh, uh, traveling nonstop right after he passed. But with the pandemic, she's been home. She's been able to work from home for, since March. Wow. So, you know, the, the girls are getting a tremendous amount of attention in, in a time where they weren't getting it at all. So I'm, I'm, I have to be grateful. So, but, you know, you never look at anything one-sided. There's always, you know, the, the good and bad of everything. And, and trust me, tomorrow I will not be saying it this way. But, <laughs> but that's how I'm feeling because it feels good just to be talking to you. Well, I'm, I'm really honored to be talking. I'm very much enjoying about this. Um, 
what was Eric's personality like? Was he funny? Was he serious? What? what serious. He was, I, I, I have two sons and one was very outgoing. My youngest son, Brian, was, is very outgoing. He was the kid that everyone loved. He was the one that came out with the most outrageous things. And there wasn't, there wasn't a person who didn't adore him growing up and, and still. I mean, he's just a people person. Eric, um, oh, and can I spell his name, please? His name is E-R-I-K. <laughs> I, I would have gotten it wrong. <laughs> of course, everybody has gotten it wrong, and that's why I try to, I try to be very clear on that, because, it, it may, I mean, I chose that when I was 15. I knew what his name was going to be, you know, years before he was born, but, um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, no, I don't like to see, I do prefer the K. And so anyway, so Eric was much more of an introvert, very quiet, very private and um, very honest and very caring, but in a, in a way that, you know, he, he didn't gather the people around him because that's not his personality where Brian had followers Eric kind of stood there and said, huh, I don't know how he does that, and would walk out of the room because it didn't matter. Uh, but, but very, very honest. When you were with Eric, you knew exactly uh, what was going on. And you can trust uh, not only his intellect, he was very bright. He, he, was, uh, he, was, um, he worked on Wall Street uh, and he, he was very, very bright. He, he, he worked with um, high net worth, worth people and had to keep, he, he was never be the traitor because that wasn't his personality, but he was behind the scenes making sure everything was done exactly the way it was supposed to be so that was, there was no risk in lawsuits and everything else. So he would play almost like three dimensional um, chess, uh, continuously i mean that's how bright he was so the for i guess that's a good for eric um when he took his um his, his part of his testing was to see how it affected his 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 brain and function that's where he fell to his knees because he always knew how bright he was not that he he would never have, you know, gloated, but innately, that was his greatest gift, was his greatest strength, was his intellect, and he didn't become uh, severe, he didn't become uh, aphasic, uh, extremely aphasic, but aphasic enough for him to be, that, that brought him to his knees, that's when he cried. He said, Mom, he said, it's gone. You know, that was very painful to him. Yeah. I was listening to um, this podcast. He's this famous surgeon, and he just wrote this book about um, end of life and the conversations that are needed to have. And he was talking about different people. Essentially, it was the conversation of, you know, what, what is a life worth living or what's a meaningful life for you and how it's different for everybody. And he's talking about one guy, um, it really was, he said, I could lose all my limbs, whatever, you know, I could be paralyzed, but my mind, like in my mind and, and other people want to be active, but it just, it speaks to what's important to people in that quality of life and having those conversations. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it, you know, I, I, I think there are a lot of people, if they have their limbs and they can get around and do it for the most part, everything they've done. They, they, you know, they, they're knocking on wood and saying, you know, how lucky am I? But it, when it affected his mind, uh, and, and again, <laughs> he, was, he was probably still more articulate than most, but for him, he knew the difference. He knew, he knew. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to turn that. Um, you know, I wouldn't, you were talking about the good and the bad. Those 18 months, as painful as they were, 
were there any gifts in those 18 months? Whether it was things that you said or things that you realized, what would they be? Very much so. Um, I had, because of the differences in personality, this is getting very personal. Uh, the, the difference in personality, I was closer with my youngest son than I was with Eric because he would only let me into a certain degree. And Brian, you know, it's tell me everything. And Brian and Eric would be, no, I don't want to hear it. I, you know, nothing like that. So very different guys. And um, I, I think uh, along the way that, that the closeness opened up, the intimacy opened up, um, and for me, uh, the greatest, my greatest moment uh, with Eric is his, his last night. Um, he was in hospice for the last five days. And uh, I flew in. Uh, we didn't expect him to go so quickly. Um, I would have flown in on the first plane. And, and I was told, no, no, no. He's not going anywhere. So I didn't get there until late. I, I didn't get there until I think Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, Wednesday maybe. And, and he passed on Saturday. But the, to, to answer your, and he had just gone into a coma. So I didn't have a chance to, to really have that interaction with him. But he had he had gone to Northwestern and Emory for his MBA, and he had friends from from Northwestern and Emory around his bed that night. They flew in from California, and he had his friends from Atlanta, from Emory, and they were they were well, we were hysterical. We here we were in this this hospice, and they would they were just telling us the best fun stories and and how hysterically funny he was and i remember slapping him and saying all these years you never told me you had a sense of humor for <laughs> god's sakes i mean you know and um but two hours it was like a farewell party to him because even in that moment of coma you know that he can still hear everything yeah. he may not be able to communicate but he the hearing apparently is the last to go and so so we had a party and um and then they left and the nurse came in well it, it was a term you've seen terms of endearment with shirley mclean of course running to the to the nurse's station saying where are the meds where are the meds mm -hmm. i did that so i'm screaming it's 10 30. he didn't have anything since six where are they where i did that whole scene <laughs> and she finally came in and um get, and he was having trouble swallowing what she was giving him and um his wife was there my daughter-in-law was there in the afternoon and she had to go home to be with the girls and um so she wasn't there but she had told him it was okay to go. And as he was having difficulty, I said to him, I said, you know, it's okay. You can go. Uh, the girls love you. Kamiko loves you. You've been a wonderful dad, a terrific husband. I love you. You've been wonderful. Now you need to take care of yourself and you need to, to let go. And I was holding his hand and rubbing his arm, and he took one breath and he was gone. And it was the greatest gift he ever gave me. And um, it, it, I will carry that the rest of my life, is that I was the last one with him, and I was able to bring him in and let him go. That, 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. That's what life's about. It is. It is. Um, it carried me through the through the funeral. Oh. Everyone was in everyone was in tears and everyone was I was high as a kite. <laughs> you, knew he, you knew he was okay. He was fine. Yeah. He was beautiful. He he was beautiful. And he was fine. And uh... did you ever? One of the things that I thought about in the beginning of our conversation is how you always wanted to paint. And have you ever thought about how that that was a gift from Eric? I, I didn't, no, I didn't. I, I, I thought it was a gift to myself uh, to save my Saturday. Did, was it a gift from Eric? I love that. I will think of that from now on. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I love that. Yes, yes. He did good. He did yeah. very good. He did uh, great. He did great. Um, well, I'm just so honored to do this story and to um share the word about this organization because it's so important the work that it does and you sharing your story i couldn't do it without you being so open and i just i'm very grateful oh it's my pleasure it's it's an incredible organization honestly i i've, I've always heard of uh, gilda's club but i've never heard of this or the clubhouse uh, but i've never heard of this and they are, you know, in several, several states. And we have three here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I think we can use more, obviously, uh, just because it's, it's, it serves so many people that are in need. It's, it's more than going to the grief group, which they have. I, I also joined Living With Loss. So, you know, I have that as well. They have all different kinds of activities. I mean, it, I I was been doing the art, but they they have exercise and they have every every they have a calendar of every day. There's activities and and different people who specialize in all their different activities. Plus, of course, all the 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 groups uh, that we all need. Um, it's been terrific. I, I I don't know how they do it. Uh, but they do it well. People are good, aren't they? Yes. Yes, they are. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I mean, I I don't know what to say that I haven't said. I, I can't recommend them enough. I, I wish there weren't, there wasn't the need, yeah. but I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that you will get the word out because I know that it's, it's not serving as many people as it can. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's too many people living with cancer one way or another. I will do my best to get the word out. I promise you. I Thank promise. you. Thank you. Uh, and if there's anything I can help you with or add to. Well, actually, actually there is. 